Would it be wonderful if we could learn all the world's language? On the interview series with me and my upcoming guest, Jean Jawad, is really on his way to accomplish just that. He speaks over 16 languages at an intermediate level or higher, and they are French, English, Arabic, Spanish, Portuguese, Romanian, Italian, Esperanto, German, Mandarin, Chinese, Turkish, Japanese, Russian, Swedish, Armenian, and Georgian. Also, some notion of Serbo-Croatian, Korean, Hebrew, Vietnamese, Greek, Polish, and Persian. Did I get all that right, George? Um, no, I guess not. No, you, 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 you said pretty much all of them, yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, that's quite fantastic for, um, you know, someone who's 18 years old. So, I guess... The question on everybody's mind is, what's what's your secret? Is there some special ingredient that, that you put in your your cereal in the morning? <laughs> is, just, uh, is a language learning magic? Well, um, I remember when I was in uh, sixth grade, I was uh, I was really curious to learn more about my cultural heritage, which is uh, which is Arabic, where the uh, the Egyptian and Lebanese cultures. Right. Because my my dad is from Egypt and my mom from Lebanon, so I was really curious. Because even though I could speak some Arabic, but it, I could only speak some really rudimentary Arabic, simple that I could use with my grandparents. But I couldn't understand the news. I couldn't read any Arabic. I couldn't write it. So I I felt a bit disconnected, and I really wanted to uh, to learn more about my roots. And so I asked my grandparents, oh, what are they saying on the news? What are they saying on this show? Uh, that's a bit complicated. We never use that together. So they told me, and I, I found out that I was really interested, and I wanted to learn more with them. And so um, they, my grandparents taught me how to, well, the, the Arabic alphabet, and then they taught me how to write the letters, how to write the script. Right. And, and then um, they made me do some dictations for practice, yeah. and I... <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was fun. Good memories, and I, yeah, well, that it's was a great fun. way to connect with them, I suppose. Exactly. Um, yeah, so I, I was able to learn more about uh, their about their interests, the the shows that they like, the news that they watch, and um, so and then I came back home and I uh, I told my parents, hey, uh, I'm learning Arabic with uh, uh, grandpa and grandma, and so and. Yeah, they, they were really, um, really happy to learn that. And then um, after a few months of learning Arabic, um, I discovered that I really, really liked it. I was really interested, and my parents noticed as well. And my dad told me, hey, um, you know, George, maybe you could go on the Internet. Um, you know, there's, there's this uh, platform called Google Translate. If you, want to, uh, if you want to practice your Arabic a bit more uh, when grandpa and grandma aren't here, or if you want to learn even more languages, uh, you can use that. So I, I gave it a try, and I went, I went on Google Translate, and I, I typed in the most random sentences you can imagine. <laughs> and then I, um, it was really, really random. It was like, oh, uh, I, like to put, um, I like to put candy peanuts in my bat soup or something like that, you know? Really, really right. complete. Yeah, yeah. And so I, I so wanted I to find out. Something that would pique your interest, I suppose. Exactly, and so I wanted to find out how that was said in other languages, and I, I, uh, I tried random languages, and I instantly fell in love because I really liked. Um, I was really interested in um, in uh, the writing scripts, but especially the pronunciation. Because when I clicked on the audio, I was like, "Wow, so that's how it's pronounced, and that's how all the letters are pronounced, and it's so different from French or English." And I really, wow, it, it's really interesting. And so I went on, I was curious to know more and like uh, what was the logic or the pattern behind it. So I, I went on Google and looked up a few websites uh, and that was when I discovered Omniglot. And, and on that website, I learned pronunciation and uh, the alphabet with a few sample phrases. And that was when I had, um, uh, you know, uh, I had my first taste of what it was to to learn a language, but back then I was quite young. I think I was 11, almost 12, and um, and at the time I wasn't really inter as interested as I am now to actively learn and speak the language. I was more interested in just knowing how it works. So uh, I did that a bit 
uh, a bit in secret because uh, I didn't. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> in secret because I didn't know many other people. In fact, I didn't. Well, uh, I'll be real. I didn't know anybody else who was interested in languages other than me. So I just decided to kept it to my to keep it to myself because I was uh, I was a, a bit of a shy kid back then. I, d I didn't want people to uh, to laugh at me because of uh, because I had a weird interest. So I just, um, I did it on my own, uh, on my free time. Um, but then um, after I learned Arabic and then I learned, uh, I started Mandarin after that because uh, Mandarin Chinese is my favorite language of all, of all time. Um, so yeah, I, I, I discovered the Chinese characters and the Chinese um, sounds and it was one of the languages that I thought, wow, it's, it sounds so musical because it has tones, it's a tonal language. And also the characters make it look like it's it's like uh, doing drawing art or, or or painting or something because it it's like it's like drawings on uh, that replace letters and I wanted to know more about them so I looked up uh, YouTube tutorials uh, videos uh, websites even songs and that was when my uh, Chinese learning started and I also um, uh, when I got uh, when when I when I found out I wanted to learn more languages, I added Spanish, and if, that was pretty much it. Uh, I, and then uh, I moved on to uh, to ninth grade uh, or secondary three when I started to uh, to take actual Chinese classes at school officially. And that was when I think that was when, uh, along with the fact that um, at the same time I discovered polyglot videos on YouTube, I discovered Tim Doner, Benny Lewis. Um, Simon Ager from Omniglot, uh, I think, uh, of Richard Simcott as well. I discovered those polyglots. They had made videos uh, of them speaking uh, 20 languages, 15 languages, and I was so impressed. I was like, wow, wow, wow. And so, first of all, I'm not the only human being in the world who likes languages as a hobby. <laughs> and second of all, wow, they actually how much time did they, and effort did they, did they have to spend to get to that level? And I was like, I want to be like them. They're my models. Wonderful. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. And, and so now I, you get to meet them at uh, the Montreal Language Festival next August. I know. I, I'm really excited. Uh, I already met Benny Lewis and um, Lindsay Does Languages, Simon Ager. But Richard Sincut is coming for the first time. I can't right. wait for him to come. If there's a trend, I could say, like, most of them will be, like, you know, English-speaking, and they'll learn a language that's probably a little easier, like Spanish or French, and then go to the other Romance languages, um, and then, uh, like, maybe add in after, they you know, four or five, like, a, a few harder, but you... Like in the list that I just uh, provided, you actually have some languages that are like, by definition, like really hard to learn. Um, I know you had some help with Arabic, but certainly I know for sure that Mandarin Chinese is not an easy language to learn. Russian, uh, all of that. Like how how do you tackle those, I guess, harder challenges? Starting with Mandarin Chinese. Um... I think that the fact that I'm, um, and I, I even took part in a Mandarin, Mandarin speaking uh, competition, and so um, I think the that path, the, the fact that I had support from uh, my teacher and also my, uh, I think a few friends were starting to, uh, to to get to know more about my passion. So I, I got I had a lot of support. I uh, they encouraged me to keep working hard, and so I did this on my free time. I. Uh, when I finished my homework, I instantly sat at my desk, took the time and energy, I think 20 to 30 minutes to practice a certain topic in Chinese that was more difficult for me um, and review the rest. Um, so okay. I think my, my drive was really the, uh, the my passion for it. And Russian, um, well, I think um, a lot of them is really... I, I had at least one friend to practice with that was supporting me and that was correcting my mistakes and helping me. And um, I, I also, they're my favorite languages. So when you really like a language, you're going to learn it faster. That's for sure. Um, okay. 
So just get me through your path. So you had already French, English, and Arabic. You learn Mandarin. Then, then what was your fifth one? I think it was uh, Spanish. Yeah, probably. Okay. Yeah, Spanish. Um, I did Spanish on Duolingo. I remember. I did it on Duolingo. I also what uh, listened to music. In fact, for 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 many of my languages, I use pretty much the same tricks. Uh, a few apps. YouTube videos and music, but I I just wanted to to build my ear to the language. That was that was uh, the most important part for me. It was to um, even though I couldn't understand all the words, at least when I heard the language, I knew it was that language. I knew what language it was, even though I didn't understand all the words. Um, and I think that's that's really important when you start learning. It's to get a good base of what the language sounds like and the sounds, so that you can reproduce them. And um, uh, that way, when you when you read a text, for example, if it's a very phonetic language, you can read the text even though you don't understand anything. You can just right. uh, pronounce everything. Uh, when you learn your first languages, it's going to be hard. But then as you move on to more languages, uh, it gets easier and easier because, first of all, you get used to uh, the pattern of learning that you that worked for you. So you can just repeat it for other languages. Right. And when you learn a new language, you can you can link the words um, to other words that you've already learned in the past in other languages, and the fact that you have a lot of um, languages from different families, different registers, it helps a lot because um, uh, uh, I, I learned that uh, human beings learn faster when they're able to uh, to to give meaning to what they're learning and also to make to make links between different uh, different concepts, different topics. So uh, applying that to languages, you can uh, you can say that oh um, now that I, I already know three or four languages um, now that I I can now that I pick up my fifth one for example uh, I can and I learned that new word it's a new word oh but it's similar to that word in in that other language I know or right. it works the grammar works in a similar way. So you can um, you can you can you can link it to something you already know, and even with languages that that are seemingly very different, uh, once you get the pattern right, I think it gets easier. And and the fact that you've um, you've already had a lot of well, not necessarily a lot, but you've had at least some difficulty uh, with uh, with another language in the past. Well, you've overcome it, so you know how you, how you overcame it. You just have to apply that technique to the other language, and it'll move on faster. Yes, I do agree that um, that some people learn faster than others, but it's like in anything. Some people, you know, some people are are really good at playing music. Some people are really good at good at uh, playing right. a certain sport, and other people are good at languages. We all have different talents. We all learn faster or s slower than average. But I think that the important thing is not to compare yourself to others, to keep track of your progress so that you can be proud of yourself. And when you're proud of yourself and when you know that you did a really good job and you learned so much, it's going to motivate you to learn even more in the future. And yeah, that, that's another advice, advice I would give. Um, be positive that every day when I'm on the bus, I listen to a song and it makes me review or uh, so okay. I'm I have subscribed to channels on YouTube that release videos every week with uh, something related to um, the, the specific language or the culture of a certain country or just any. It could also be um, uh, a channel about any topic, but in that language so I can practice. For example, it could be a comedy channel in German. Um, that What's next for Georges Awad? What's your future plans? What new language do you want to learn? Um, right now, I'm... I'm focusing a lot on uh, on a few languages that I already know and I, I, that I want to focus on maintaining, especially Japanese because I'm I'm planning a trip to Japan this summer and I I really want to make sure I can talk for as long as possible with the people and I'm also going to meet a few friends there that I have. I want to. Um, okay. I, I also started a few. Uh, well, the the languages that I have that I have some notions of that you mentioned. I'm also working on them. I have a few channels to, to work on that, and I'm definitely keeping in touch with that. And um, I, 
I was also interested. Uh, I started learning. Uh, uh, I, I didn't. I didn't keep at it for long because I wanted to touch my other languages. But I also started learning a, a, a few, um, a few really, really simple notions and phrases of, uh, of First Nations languages. I know a bit of Inuktitut and Ojibwe. And wow, that's amazing. It, it's it's very interesting. And you know, because I'm really interested in the in the history of. Uh, of First Nations in Canada, and you uh, and you know, and also uh, uh, what happened to them when the Europeans came, and when uh, 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 a lot of their languages disappeared, and even many of their of the First Nations languages today are are in um, in danger of being extinct. So, right. And uh, I'm also interested in any any language um, any languages in the world that are close to being extinct, or that the UNESCO published a report of um, of uh, near extinction, and I. I found it really sad that uh, that so much beautiful, rich culture and history are are gonna just vanish just like that because because the language is gonna die, and I find it quite sad. Of course, I can, uh, I can't learn all of them on my own, and just one person can't do much. But at least um, you know I want to select a few languages that that are interesting to me that I uh, that I feel a closer closer connection to. And I start with start with those and uh, take it from there. And, and well, Jos, thank you very much for your time today. Good luck for your future endeavor, and I'm looking forward to meeting you at uh, Langfest in August. It was my pleasure. I'm also looking forward to meeting you. Thanks, thanks for having me. Thanks for your time. All right, wonderful. Have a nice day. You too. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. Remember that you can register for the Montreal Language Festival on the website down below. And you can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Have a nice day.